so yeah that's that's interesting I've, I've since i've done the um lost in translation mix um uh, at least a song um i've been thinking about okay that yeah i, I really would i kind of want to go back and all of the stuff i've done especially recently i want to redo you know like in the last few months oh, i want to mix this in atmos so um and uh i've kind of you know thought like oh yeah this you know this particular sound it should be uh, above me to the right so um i i think um i have lots of ideas of what i'd like to do but one thing i realized um is uh, like the workflow i've kind of learned um just from working on the uh, elisa song um things that i would have done differently workflow wise i can prepare f for the mix easier because some of the stuff that i did with her, her mix I kind of handcuffed myself later on. It's like, ah, oh, so like printing and delivery was kind of difficult, um, just the way I set it up. So I think the next time, I'll next mix I do, um, I can be more creative and not really worry about the workflow so much. But yeah, there's uh, uh, lots of things uh, I want to explore, especially like, I think in at least the mix, I didn't really, um, didn't really explore some of the height enough so i really want to get in and explore um height information like you know low to high type stuff um and like making things move from low to high and back so i i'm really uh, excited to do that with the, with the future mix especially with you know some of the other things that i've done that have m like maybe i have more than 100 tracks of stuff to do so it's like okay i don't have to smash all of this into two channels i have you know you know 10 channels 10 plus channels of stuff of places to put things so kind of excited to do that i th personally like after doing uh this mix i feel like it is pretty pretty necessary like doing doing it on headphones purely um it's, it's it's okay for setting up your mix and getting it prepared but i think having the a room like this is definitely necessary to get the full uh full impact of it for, for the engineer and for the final product. So. So that, that's another part of that, um, uh, that I think I learned doing this mix. Like I, I think I only had a few things, um, going through the actual bed. Um, and most of my tracks were, I was using them as objects, which, was fine but many uh, many of those sounds didn't a couple of the sounds didn't really move too much so i learned like well i don't really think it's necessary to um, make those objects they could have just gone through the bed if they're just going to be static and stay um but a few of the sounds that, that really moved around i i utilized those um as objects and i've used the dolby atmos panner which is you know which by the way it's nobody's been able to use that that's so much fun to play with so the uh, atmos panner so the the like arpeggiating tracks i use those uh, as objects and put the double atmos panner on those and um, i think like the a few of the effects that didn't move too much they kind of just stay in place i i ran those through um through beds i mean th yeah through the beds and couple of delays that maybe like moved around a, a little bit I use those objects but um, yeah ne next time I'll, I kind of have a better feeling of what I need to do and what what things should be objects what things should be bed so um, and again going back to the some of the songs I demoed at the office Dolby Atmos op office it was interesting um, I demoed this listen to those songs but looking at the um, renderer and you could see you know how the mix how the mix was done was it using beds or was it using objects so like i think the jonas brothers sucker i think they used all beds they didn't use any objects which was interesting so things kind of stayed static and it felt like a band so um that's one kind of exciting thing i think about dolby atmos is there's you have different options so you can approach the song in different ways so um yeah for so for the uh, lost in translation song i use the combination of, of beds and objects but i want to say i used a lot of objects compared to the small amount of tracks i had i, I use maybe too many objects for this one actually so what the best uh 
Well, I don't know if there's any like best one. I think uh, even some of the you know like the the pop stuff that I that I've done uh, recently would be really fun because there's there's a ton of sounds and it just gives you you know uh, more options to play stuff. Um, so that you know, like I was saying, it's in it. Every mixer has this problem: is trying to fit everything into two two channels and um, uh, make it still have impact. I think with um, these pop songs with lots of percussion, it's going to be uh, really fun to uh, to do it in Atmos. Also, some of like the, the hip hop stuff, for example, um, like uh, more like trap oriented stuff, where there's lots of atmospheric type sounds, and they they really love like drenching the vocals and, and reverbs. I think those are going to be fun to mix as well. Some of the hip hop stuff, so it, it's meant to be kind of trippy sounding stuff, so you can make you can have stuff bounce around and I think they're gonna you know the artist and the um, label is gonna be happy if maybe the vocals back here sometimes you know they're, they're gonna be totally totally fine with that so um, that's gonna be fun I, I believe um, so yeah I, I, I think genre wise yeah I can't think of any genre that might be better you know work better with that um, I think uh, you know the interesting one of the interesting things from uh, you know, especially doing a lot of reading about Atmos recently is the possibilities of creating songs from scratch in Dolby Atmos, not just sitting down and with headphones or with two speakers creating a song, but actually from the jump. Okay, we're gonna uh, put a guitar and the guitar is gonna be uh, behind us and to the left. You know, it's gonna that's gonna start out and chunk 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 chunk. It's gonna do that and so. Starting out a song from scratch in Dolby Atmos is going to, I think, bring some interesting possibilities because, you know, we think about it for more than 80 years now. Everybody's been mixing and, you know, okay, the, the vocal, most for the most part, has been in the middle, you know, depending on, you know, the time. Sometimes the vocals have been left or right or whatever, but, you know, vocals here and it doesn't really change. So now it's almost like a paradigm shift you know we don't vocal doesn't necessarily have to be there it can be in the in the back over to the side you know um, and that's gonna be okay just depending on the song so you can I think maybe tell the story uh, really well now so maybe depending on the lyrics in the song stuff can move around if you know if the song is saying that someone's walking down the street maybe the vo vocal might move around it might, that you know it just it's going to give us uh, a lot of possibilities. Um, I think, and also outside of music, Dolby Atmos might have some like uh, uh, educational possibilities. You know, when you start with video and stuff like that, you know, uh, explaining things. How you know, I don't know. It, it could be it could be anything, any kind of um, subject. You know, with with the locational possibilities with Dolby Atmos, you can explain things more with uh, video. So, just outside of music, there's I think lots of uh, possibilities. But of course, with music as well, it's um, uh, going to open up. Uh, I, th I think there's going to be we're going to be surprised about some of the things that we'll be able to do with uh, with Atmos, and people might have not thought about it. So, that's one thing we're not really we don't get. I think with with two channels is um, we don't get that sense of space. So if we go see a live show, even if we go to a, a, a small club or a bar, we feel the space. So we feel the, you know, the little slap back echo bouncing off, uh, off of the back of the bar, you know, or, or, from the, or from the toilet or from the hallway going up to the street, you know, we feel some kind of like space. And uh, we don't really feel that at two channels. So with, with Atmos, we can create that. and you're gonna you're gonna feel that experience that that you're there and, and of course i think we're going to be able to hear sounds we never really noticed in in two channel mixes so i think that's going to give a really intimate experience and uh, what i what i call the the moment where you know the hair on your arm kind of stands up you know you're like oh wow you know you, you kind of just feel it from all around you so um yeah i think there's going to be a lot of those moments uh when people experience uh a really cool uh, Dolby Atmos mix and especially with the artists uh, they like. So. <laughs>